Hi guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my channel. As I'm sure a lot of you have seen, trans rights and trans people have been a very hot topic recently. What with the Gender Recognition Act, trans rights are being called into question. Everyone's talking about trans people, <laughs> which is fine. It's a good thing having our rights discussed and hopefully showing people we should have equal rights because all we want to do is just kind of live our lives. But something I've seen a lot happening recently is what I like to call cisconceptions which are common misconceptions that apply to some cis people that aren't necessarily transphobic, are just a bit ignorant or just don't know much about trans people yet. I am here to teach you some things. So I just got distracted because I saw a cat. So yes, common cis conceptions. <gasps> the cat's back. Common cis conception number one, trans people choose to be trans. I don't even know where to begin with this one. It's not a choice not being funny. I am grateful for the things I've learned through being trans, through the people I've met, the experiences I've had. I know a lot of it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't trans, but if I could have chosen to be born cisgender with the body that I should have had, probably would say yes. And a lot of people probably agree with me. I don't understand how anyone would think we would choose this. Why would I choose to go through years of rigorous waiting, medical treatment, surgery, stress, dealing with people misgendering me, calling me the wrong name, dealing with transphobes and turfs being assholes, going out and every day dealing with the risk of being attacked or beaten up or verbally abused or killed. Why would I choose to do that? It's not a choice. Common misconception number two, transition has a start and end point. It doesn't. Transition is entirely different for each individual person. Not everyone transitions in the same way. Not everyone does like medically transition with hormones and surgery. Some people just socially transition. Some people just physically transition. Some people do a bit of both. Some people do it all. Some people do neither. I wouldn't say my transition started when I started tea. I'd say it probably started when I came out as trans to myself. In terms of an end point, yeah, there really isn't one. I mean, in terms of hormones, I have to take testosterone for the rest of my life. So when people say, have you finished transitioning? No, even if you have a trans guy who's had top and bottom surgery, you still couldn't say finished because it doesn't end. You stay on T your whole life if you're on T. And there are constant changes as well. And obviously it plateaus after you've been on hormones for a number of years, but changes will continue to happen just like they would for a cis man. It's not so much that the transition ends, it's just that it just becomes a routine part of your life. Common misconception number three, hormones and surgery magically fixes all of your problems. It doesn't, unfortunately. I personally had a lot of issues before even realizing I was trans, I had issues, some of which were tied into my gender identity and have slightly lessened since I started T, but some of them are nothing to do with being trans. So I will deal with them for however long I deal with them for. Transitioning doesn't magically fix everything because not everything is about transitioning. Mental health, while tied in to gender dysphoria, isn't always a cause and effect type situation. My mental health, while it is improved by me being on T and will drastically improve when I get top surgery, it's not magically going to all be fixed. My depression isn't just gonna go, oh, you've had all these things done, all right, see you later, mate, peace. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. It would be amazing if it did, but it's not. Common misconception number four, you are entitled to know every little thing you wanna know about a trans person and their transition. It stuns me how often I actually see this, even from people that mean well and that are cool with trans people. Surely there must be a part of your brain that knows. I've met this person five minutes ago, asking about what's in their pants probably isn't the most appropriate thing. And yet you do it anyway. I've experienced this so much. I've had people ask me about what's in my pants. I've had people ask me about my sex life. I've had people ask about my body and use words that would be triggering without checking, is it okay if I use this language? People that know I'm a trans guy, then they use inherently female words to describe my body. Why the fuck would you do that? <laughs> the scariest part is this is from people who call themselves trans allies. If this is what we're getting from the allies, what the fuck is gonna happen with the transphobes? That's why it's important if you wanna be a good trans ally to actually educate yourself. It isn't enough just saying, yeah, I support trans people, show us. Educate yourself, learn language, learn how to talk about us, learn how to talk to us, learn how to ask simple questions like what are your pronouns? Also, I can't believe I'm having to say this to people who are predominantly adults. If you've just met someone, don't ask them about their fucking genitals. Don't ask what they do in the bedroom. The only time that should concern you is if you are gonna sleep with that trans person. And even then, you talk about it in the bedroom, not in the middle of a fucking bar or a party. I have been to places where I have been there for less than five minutes and I've had people ask me questions like that. 
I mean, I've said this 5,000 times before. I sound like a broken record, but I will keep saying it until it stops happening. Stop asking people about what's in their pants and about how they have sex, especially if you don't know them very well. You'd think this would be a given, but it's not. <laughs> these are the main misconceptions I could think of for this video. There are other ones, but these are like the major ones that spring to mind and that I've seen happen regularly and recently. If you guys have any other ones you want to talk about, you know what to do. Leave me a comment, tweet me. If you're a cis person who has caught yourself doing some of these things or saying some of these things, maybe take a moment, reevaluate, and think, huh, okay, how can I improve and be a better friend, better trans ally? It will enrich your life. You will have much better connections with the trans people you know, with any future trans people you might meet. And it will just make the world a better place for everybody, but especially for trans people who, right now, people are really trying to ruin our lives. People are trying to make things very difficult. So having educated trans allies who legitimately want to help and learn and support us, it truly means the world. That's the main reason I'm making this video, because your support is important and it's needed because we are a minority. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you're having a good day, evening, night, wherever you are, and I'll see you all soon. Bye. I need to stop. Whenever I do put my hands up and put them down, I keep slapping my legs. It's like a weird... If you guys ever hear like this at the end of a sentence, it's me just like whacking on my thighs. I don't know why I do that. Um, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying me because you can hear it in the video and I can't edit it out because it happens right after I speak. But anyway, bye. <laughs>